who's ready to print a shirt with the Epson F2270. Stefan here with All America Print Supply. In today's video, we'll be working with the new hybrid DTF DTG printer from Epson and going over some of the best practices to get the perfect print every time. If you have any questions on how this machine works or what it can do, go ahead and leave it at the comment section down below. If you guys are ready to get started, drop a thumbs up if you're ready to see this thing print. Let's fire it up. As soon as you power on the machine, before we get to anything, you always want to remember to shake those white inks. Now you will get a friendly reminder from the Epson F2270 on screen in case you ever happen to forget. Now what you're going to want to do is open the ink drawer on this side of the printer, remove the whites, and in about 25 back and forth motions, we're just going to agitate the white ink that's in the pouch. Now we want to be careful not to get too violent with the agitation so as we do not create bubbles in the ink pack. Again, about 25 each side, and it's only going to be on the whites. We'll repeat this step for both of the ink packs, and we'll go ahead and print our nozzle check. I'll show you how to do that on screen. After we've successfully agitated both the white ink packs, let's go ahead into our menu, and then we're gonna go down to maintenance, and then we're gonna print a nozzle check. Let's confirm that we're gonna be printing this directly on the platen by pressing start, and then hit the button here to commence. Take a look at this nozzle check. Here we can see complete nozzle boxes on our check for white and all of our CMYK channels as well. Additionally, on the nozzle check, you'll have important information such as your serial number and today's date. Now, if your nozzle check looks like this, you're ready to begin printing. However, depending on the condition the machine was laughed left, left in or how long it's been printed with, you may get an incomplete check, which could look something like this. If you get an incomplete nozzle check, you would want to correct this before beginning production. Let's take a look on screen how we'd correct this if, for example, white channel 4 printed incomplete. If you achieved a correct nozzle check with all the complete rectangle boxes, you can go ahead and press this blue button to begin production. However, if you printed an incomplete nozzle check, you'd press this to correct it. Let's take a look how. Now, you can perform, depending on the severity of the incomplete nozzle check, cleanings ranging from heavy, medium, and light. And while a heavy or medium cleaning may correct the issue in one pass, we do advise printing multiple light cleanings. This will help conserve the cleaning solution in the maintenance pack. So let's go ahead and choose light. Now, because the area incomplete on the nozzle check was only affected in white channel four, we're not gonna choose all nozzles, but rather selected nozzles. Now here we can see white one and two, CM, YK, and white three and four. Now because the issue was isolated to white four, we're gonna go ahead and choose this option. However, you can also include additional areas if those nozzles were affected incomplete in the nozzle check as well. After you've selected which nozzles you wish to perform your cleaning on, go ahead and press OK. Now because our check printed perfect, we're not gonna initiate the cleaning, but this would be the button you'd press to start the cleaning at your desired strength on your selected nozzles but let's go back and start printing. After we've taken care of all of our white ink agitation and printed a successful nozzle check, now we can begin production. First thing we gotta do is load the shirt. In preparation for today's video, we've gone ahead and already pre-treated our 100% ring spun cotton garment. Now if you have any questions on pre-treating, what it is or how to perform this, you can go ahead and click these videos up here. Now everyone's gonna be different as far as their preferred method for getting the garment onto the platen, but this is what we like to use here. My preference is to actually thread the garment onto this part of the machine so it's wearing it, almost like an ironing board. With the side seams of the garment held firmly, we're gonna go ahead and thread this completely onto the platen. And then, what I like to do is give myself about a one, two, depending on the size of the graphic, finger gap from the top of the collar to the top of the platen. Now, as far as centering, we're gonna to wanna to make sure that the sleeve stitch right here that connects the body to the sleeve of the garment is equal distance depth on this side as well as this side of the platen. This will ensure a nice center position so we get perfect placement on our print. After we've loaded our garment onto our platen and centered it using these sleeve stitchings with our gap from the neckline, we'll go ahead and place our hoop and get this loaded onto the machine. Now it's worth noting, because of the garment thickness optimization feature, which senses the height of the garment and the platen in the machine, there's no need to really adjust with any of the height settings underneath the platen. Awesome feature on the 2270. 
All right, now let's take a look into the Garmin Creator 2 included free RIP software for the 2270 and go over how we print a shirt direct to Garmin style. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my artwork and simply drag and drop it into our workspace area here. Now you may notice the graphics a little oversized, which is good. It's always preferable to shrink the images down versus blowing them up to fit our dimensions. This will ensure that we maintain all of our resolution and avoid any sort of pixelation. Let's go ahead and bump this to about a 13 wide. You know what, I can go a little bigger, we'll go 14. There we go, get a nice full size print. Now in our print settings, let's take a look at some of these preset options in here. Today we're gonna be using black color t-shirt, use garment black. What that means is the printer is gonna lay down a white base layer, all the CMYK to create our design, but if there is any black in the image, it will not print that. It's gonna use the actual black of the garment color, which will save time, ink, and increase hand feel. Now the difference between black t-shirt and dark t-shirt, while the dark color t-shirt option is still gonna produce a white base underneath, CMYK on top, if there is black in the design, it will physically print it. So instead of dark t-shirt, I'd really prefer to use this for all colors that are not black, like we just spoke about, or white. Speaking of white, the light color t-shirt option is gonna be a CMYK only print, meaning there will be no white underbase. So on a white color garment, this will be ideal to get perfect color values. However, depending on the color of the shirt, your accuracy may not be the same if you do not print white. So to recap, black t-shirt for black, light t-shirt for white, and dark t-shirt essentially for everything else. Following along? All right, now let's take a look at our quality settings. Now you're gonna have a few different options to choose from when we're printing the black t-shirt. So we'll go ahead and look at these levels right here. Now, levels one and two are gonna be a little faster, but they will print a reduced amount of ink. So these will be more ideal for promotional items, samples, or maybe giveaway garments. Your sweet spot is typically gonna be between the levels of three, four, and five, depending on your artwork. Now here, we have level three, four, and five, and they're gonna increase with varying amounts of white depending on the higher level you choose. We'll go ahead and lay down the white color layer here. Now the reason we prefer white, it's gonna give us that white base, and additionally, if there is any white in the design, it'll also add that in as a layer of highlight to really make those designs pop. Now aside from that, you will have additional options in here such as television style saturation, brightness, and contract controls. However, ideally your artwork is already prepped and ready for printing and we're just dragging and dropping like you saw us do. But if you do have those preferences to increase any of your blue levels, reds, or make any of those television adjustments, those will all be right here in the software. Now we're not gonna make any further adjustments. This is gonna be ready to go. We're gonna leave our quantity here at print level one. And this blue progress bar is tracking how fast the data is transmitting from my computer to the actual printer. Let's go ahead to the front and get this ready to go. Now once the data is received on the Epson F2270, you'll have your confirmation and a visual preview of the file you're about to print. Additionally, the blue light up here will signal it's ready for printing. Let's send the job. There we have it folks, pretty simple, right? And fast. We are looking at an estimated between 20 to 25% speed increase when compared to the previous model. Now that you have your beautiful freshly printed direct to garment product, it's time to cure it. Now you can check on these videos up here for the different curing methods available and what may work best for your workshop. You know, these machines are really gonna help a lot of people elevate their current production and efficiency with both the hybrid DTG and DTF printing. And we've only scratched the surface. Make sure you guys stay tuned for the full DTF tutorial on how to run direct to film with the Epson F2270. That's pretty much gonna wrap it up for this one. I'm gonna keep this shirt for myself. We'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>